Gordon Manning Tipperary have just somehow won that. So I'd say that's possibly the best Tipperary performance that I've seen in many, many years. Not because they won the game, but to do it by 14 men. And it felt like a million and one decisions went against them. I just thought that was an incredible performance. What do you think? An incredible, Shane. I mean, look, the scenes out here are Tipperary players. I mean, look, everything went against them in that second half. And the sending off. I mean, Chidi threw in the troops. They got four points off the bench. Four of the lads that come in scored. There's been question marks over the tip bench. They really delivered here when they needed. But the, the, the players like Noel McGrath, the experienced guys, they delivered big time when the pressure was on today. I mean, when they were down to 15, 14 men, a numerical disadvantage. They had a huge Wexford crowd here. All the 50 50 decisions will go Wexford's way. And Tipperary dug it out. Serious character, serious resilience. I'd like to, to get a red card, so probably one of your key forwards. John McGrath probably hasn't been having his best season of all time. To go five points down and then to bring it back. And Jason Ford even could have put him ahead, but uh, missed hit a free. Even Seamus Callan and then he got going for uh, over carrying the ball here, throwing the ball, but it could have been a free in. It just felt like, like you were neutral here. Did you feel like everything went against Tipperary and it still came on top? All the 50 50 calls, or big, the big 50 50 calls, went Wexford's way. But it was the, the, the goal here in the first half that Tipperary got, but it looked like it was going over that uh, Brian Hogan had caught a ball under his cross, oh, just over his cross mark, but Lee Chen free, and the referee reviewed it, and the Hawkeye recalled, and said the ball had gone over the bar, so was a, that was a four point swing, that went against him, the sending off was a fair call, in fairness, it was a se definitely a second yellow card, borderline red, definitely a second yellow card, but then, they had, a, they had another goal to go against Tipperary in the second half, all the calls went against him. You can see here there was a man marking job going on between Tommy Dunn and Sir Joe Boltzmann as well throughout the yeah, entire game. Happened. I mean, everybody played their part for Tipperary from the sideline onwards. And at the end here, I've rarely seen she Liam Sheedy as absolutely uh, passionate and almost exhausted from the energy he was exposed on the sideline here. But those Tipperary players today, they brought back serious pride to the county today because everything went against them and they delivered and they stood up against what really was. Uh, a, a full house nearly of Wexford fans, or certainly 70 30 here, majority. And look, Tipperary are going to go back to, we talked the hurling revolution years, the talk of it, go oh, back to the, 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 back to the old order. Look, let's go back to the old order, that's it. It's grim, but it's absolutely brilliant. And like the, the bench there, Ger Brown oh. comes on and gets a point, Willie Connors gets a point, Mark Hyo, Jake Morris, yeah. Alan Flynn comes in and does his bit as well. It's, it really is uh, like just incredible performance. You mentioned the guy who said Jar Brown, Willie Connors, Jack Morris only in scored a huge point. But there was two massive points from Noel McGrath here at one stage when the pressure was on, when uh, had Wexford gone, uh, Wexford led, uh, Wexford led 318 to 121 at that stage. And Noel McGrath scored two massive points in a row to bring the game back. And then Mark uh, Kyo then got the leveller in the 65th yeah. minute. They were so to go from in three down, Noel McGrath showed a huge leadership, three points in a row, uh, two points in a row, and then going to the kill to equalise it. But Shane, there's been question marks over the legs in this tip team and the energy and the pace. And they were down to 14 men here in a really hot day in Crow Park, but they're in the semi-final. And they just I mean, they answered so many critics and so many doubts about them today. But to not only to do it, but to do it after the beating that they'd gotten against Limerick in the, in the Munster final, when the team more or less just fell away and the last 20 minutes weren't even there to be counted. To play so poorly against Leash, to change things around. To credit, uh, credit Liam Sheedy, he changed things around. He brought in Seamus Kennedy, he did his job. Barry Heffernan did pretty well on Lee Chin. I know Lee Chin ended up getting a few scores. What did he get? He got a goal anyway and he did have an influence. But Barry Heffernan did very well there. Ronan Maher going back on, on Conor McDonald's. Scored two points and set up a few scores as well from full back, even though McDonald got a goal. But the way Wexford play, there are going to be scores back there. So I think in the first half, Wexford kind of probably did rule the roost a little bit, even if they got the decisions. But when it came down the track, I think it's just a team that is reborn after what happened in that most of the fight. It was a game of chess in some ways in the first half because we had men following, it was man marking jobs all over the place, you know. We had some big performances, you mentioned there, Barry Heffernan and Lee Chin. Uh, you know, you had, uh, we were looking at Ronan Maher picking up Conor McDonald. Conor McDonald got 2 1, but you couldn't say Ronan Maher had a bad game. No, but, no, you know, no. he scored two points from playing himself. Um, you know, Wexford panicked at the end of the small but I thought they hit a lot of high hanging ball in the full forward line, which is a back ball. There was literally, at the end it was just hitting hopes up, Mark yeah. Fanning was dropping it in as well, long puckouts. But look, Shane, when we look at it here, after the sending off and John McGregor got a second yellow card in the 45th minute, Rory O'Connor popped over a point, Jack O'Connor popped over a point, and then we had the lead chin goal. They got 1-2 on the bounce. I mean, that's when this Tipperary team could have just said, you know what, we'll pack away the hurls here. That's it, you know, season over, hasn't worked out. They've beaten in Limerick, 
and here we have a Wexford rising tide, the purple and gold wave coming. Would have been easy just to give up then, 14 men, and they pushed on the shoulder. The, the, the big guys delivered for them, but also the guys coming off the bench that maybe people might know about the subs coming in. And look at what a week it's been like for Jake Maris, you know. I mean, oh, stop, the winner in the Munster final yeah. as well, and uh, like, incredible. Um, it hasn't been the greatest season of all time, and here we are, all Ireland final, all Ireland semi final weekend has been absolutely incredible. And the tip player is going mental down yeah, there. Look, I see Paddy Maher hugging him and O'Shea. It's, it's been a long time since we've seen Tipperary and Kenny players celebrate semi finals win like they have in the last yeah. 24 hours here. Look, Jane, we talked about, you know, as, as we mentioned, the revolution here is in hurling and, you know, the coming, you know, teams coming from different, different uh, counties and how maybe the old order, old world order wasn't going to be. Uh, as dominant, and here we are yet again going to be in a build up to Kilkenny Tipperary Ireland finals. Same as there ever was. Yeah, same as there ever was. Thanks very much, Gordon.